It's the last dying day of the year almost here. Crickets. The raw raws. Focus on the things that make your life a little bit easier, even though you're focusing on a lot of those things because it's not so easy. None of us didn't decide to, to pull back and say, wait a minute, why isn't things working out? And then we got overwhelmed pretty quickly by what we saw. Very few of us uh, worked out how, the, how, how what's on us even got here. Some research the information, and we think that's uh, enough. And now that we know, that's all there is. And all I can say is it's not. And the stuff that you looked out and saw was all over you was a plan, with multiple plans. And that's uh, an, an observation I've made over, over years and years. Part of these researches are it's like doing the equivalent of researching and commenting on the history of the Titanic while you're aboard the Lusitania. It may not be so real beneficial to many people, especially yourself. I mean, I sit here, as I just start the broadcast, my mind just is, I don't even know what more to say to people. You either roll up your sleeves and figure something out you need to make right, or else all that you will write and complain about is going to come on you. There's just nothing to stop it. And so we do have to get active if we intend to see better than what we've been experiencing. And in my mind, what we were brought into said promised would be available. Or as naive as we may have been that to reality, it still is there to, for us to grab up and, and obtain. Okay, this will be BTWRLM299. They come on uh, really close to my 10th year broadcasting generally. Five years, I think, on uh, reallibertymedia.com. And almost the 300th episode on reallibertymedia.com. So, kind of coming together pretty close here. And I'm still talking about similar things. Can't be the same thing as this thing that moves along and I get to expose to you a little bit more. Like last week, finally got to the point where I could say, okay, council of government, the cogs, and us being caught up in the cogs in commerce is something hopefully people were prepared for. Now, I don't know how many of you followed up on that to understand that's one of the main one of the main actors in your wherever you live. And this is the United States of America. Those of you out of the country, you probably have the same thing. What we're up against in one issue, in one one aspect, is global. There's no way to get away away from it, and anybody who tries to argue is probably them trying to get you to look away from the tyranny or crime that they're perpetrating on everyone. Not just you, but everyone. So uh, before I get going too far, I want to thank everybody who has been sharing the broadcast, actually picking up the content and rebroadcasting it like on YouTube. Appreciate all that, all those that have come and gone even. Uh, I don't know if they're still there. Some people would tell me they were there and now they're not available. Don't know what ever happens to people. And this is another problem. They, we keep ourselves divided for reasons. Uh, we keep ourselves separated. Uh, I, although I did uh, m notice something, I need to make sure I get clarified. If uh, anybody talked with me or communicated with me and got the idea that there's an exclusive right to uh, reproduce what I'm doing as content, that's not the truth. I'm uh, Just to explain a little bit without getting too technical, I reserve the copyright. And I do that really for one particular instance. A long time ago, I started looking at what copyright was and wasn't. And really, it came out of the theft of patents, a friend's patent, that I started looking at a lot of this patent stuff, because that's constitutional as well. Not because it was constitutional, but it was one of the aspects you have to study. I realized the function, one of the functions of the copyright and a patent, particularly the patent, it clearly says that's to protect your rights, whatever they are. And it's a statutory, even though it's constitutional, it's a statutory right. You don't have this natural right to protect anything, actually. And the government's come along and they say, well, we're going to give you protection because we want the the, the one who invents or creates something to have some time to be able to re, to recover their their costs or their their creativity. You know, I'm not saying I like it or don't. I'm just saying that's what it is. Well, so so I realized though early on, this is many many years ago, 
when I started to write, I was doing more writing. I certainly wasn't doing broadcasting. The people would take my work and they would adulterate it. And I realized right then, it wasn't that I wanted the copy, I wanted to use the copyright because I didn't want the information out or I wanted to be like uh, some musician. I wanted to make all the money if I was going to make money, that I would get it all to myself. Uh, I really started to see that I wanted the copyright and I retained the copyright in order to protect myself and the content from misdeeds of others. And so there is no exclusiveness to this. I retain everything to protect that my content for its purpose and to protect me in the future of the future I see coming where again we see it now you are blamed for something that you didn't do and I needed to I looked at way past and I said okay that's going to be one of the measures I can take uh, to uh, mitigate these problems coming and anyway get back to the point of it I noticed there was um, I don't remember now where uh, notice there was a claim that there was a sole use. Uh, well, yeah, for you, it, anyone, it's anyone who wants to use the broadcast for content is sole use. In a way, I, as long as you keep to the message that you think that the message is, like I've noticed a nice, uh, like over at uh, Sound Minds, they, he puts up graphics and stuff. I have no problem uh, with the amplification of it. Uh, so, and then like normalization of ignorance, they just put a, ca a video cover picture and they just ran the entire broadcast over their their YouTube channel so to me it's just getting the word out and that's all I I'm interested in is getting the word out however I realized years and years ago we're talking decades now I realized that copyright can protect me against uh, against problems so there's no way I can actually make an exclusivity to anyone anyway anyway but if I've made it an intimation to anybody that makes them believe they can have exclusive exclusivity of production for my content I, I got to clear the air that that's not what I did. Get in contact with me, and I'll we'll figure out what I, what I what uh, what I said that g gave anybody that idea. I, I don't have a problem with the reproduction of it. And again, if you want to add amplify the message, fine. Uh, but there can't really be a, an exclusivity. For what reason? I, I already only get a couple hundred people listening at over ten years. But you have to understand this dynamic. How people get on and get millions and millions and millions and billions of people and views over the time that they're on. They come in and they all of a sudden take the places by storm. And I've been here plodding along for 10 years now. And I can't get but a handful of people to listen. It says a whole lot about a lot of things. And so there's no, no facet in me to say, oh, we got to be exclusive. So I appreciate places like UCY.TV taking on the broadcast, simulcasting it, taking us live. I think I may still be live. I did notice we went back up on UCY. Now the broadcast is going back up. Jules uh, is over there putting more things back on her UCY.TV YouTube. Access by billions, and we only get a dozens of people watching and listen. To me, that's, I mean, I just want to put my head down and give up at some level. But I know it doesn't going to take, it's just going to take a few key people in, in maybe a lot of spaces, places, but it's still going to take... A lot less than we think in order to change this. I talked about the cogs yesterday, last week, excuse me, last week. If you are to understand how that works, you can kill this. You'll kill it a different way than what I, I go through, but it's a different facet of the act. It's the, a different implementation of the same thing that I tell you about that's killing everybody. It's killing the world. It's what the people in France are responding to. This is happening in the world in the United States of America as well. In fact, it's been a long, got a long history before you even got here, as I hope you understood through the COGS, and being here likely before most of all my listeners. And I hope you listened last week to figure out, to see that there's a lineage of all that, how it pulls together, how it can form a plausible reason why you see the world the way you do. And it's not the world. It's local to you that you're destroyed. And how I come weekly to tell you how to destroy that. It's, it's in the method that they approached this thing long time ago that you attack. You just hit it right between the eyes. And I can't believe I can't get a few people that want to do that. Oh, I get thousands and thousands of people want to do it some way else. And then complain. And, but they won't want to look and settle down on these things. I see article after article now blaming the fire, what the fires are on. The fires are local authority, folks. The, in the public public lands. Those are local authority. Where is the authority that didn't step up 
that I've told you how to go approach your, your local counties. They're now asking folks. It's time for you to step up and go in. People listening to me have, have the authority in them, the knowledge to walk in and say, here, this is where the authority is. Do I have to run it down? Quickly. The national, for it's even a policy, folks. The national wildfire policy, 1995, as amended till like 2015. It's all the same thing. Never thing nothing ever really changed. Just refined. Tweaking the knobs to, to destroy you quicker. The answer is in that policy. In, the, in that policy, it says that the local government uh, is the authority, is the ultimate of responsibility. Now, you tell me why the fires are going on. We hear a PG&E may be going down for murder now if it's found they caused it. Well, that's going to be an interesting analysis. The state has just given them uh, mag uh, immunity. But what is that PG&E? It's a corporation. It's a piece of paper in a file someplace. Like we're going to hang it to the, uh, put in life imprisonment, I guess, yeah? And so there's a legalism there that we could actually, do, parts of you all could be del delving into to figure out, but what is going on here? Why is it at the point at this point right now we can't get rid of co corporations? Why has it gone to the point that a corporation can't be dismantled like it used to be back in before the 30s? We need to br probably bring that back. But we'd get rid of these corporations that do people harm. So, you know, we, we can, like I said, we got a bunch of fingers pointing out. We can blame all kinds of things. We can blame all kinds of hysteria on what's going on. The latest one now, now it's DEWs on the Kenner uh, uh, substation blow up. Well, what's this? Well, if you look carefully, it's a lens flare. It's not a beam from space. So, well, see, we'd rather get in this, get involved in all this sensationalism instead of going right to the problem. And this is my problem with all of this. I'm starting to see we go off in all these sensationalisms and we don't solve the problem. And the, the problem of Kenner was also associated with a solar event and also with the data failure of 911 and with a, what a, an Alabama failure. Anybody looking at the world, uh, the, the dynamic of so the solar system, maybe that's what's causing it, the same thing that is denied in climate change, and we keep focusing on this lie, this fraud, this tyranny, this treason, and instead of looking at the dynamic of the world and saying, listen, there's go, we don't, may not be able to solve this thing. We better start understanding it. Yet we can't because of the noise. And it takes a very strong focus to filter that noise out. So, thank you to Normalization of Ignorance. You've been posting. I noticed you haven't been posting for three weeks. I hope you're okay. I don't know any communication. But this is the kind of interesting thing about this Internet. You can participate and help where you can. We're not, we're not without a, an avenue. And uh, Sound Mind, thank you for what you're doing. And anybody else that I, I can't remember. I remember lots of things are coming in my mind right now. I can't, I don't dial, line them out. I remember commenting. I noticed the posts were going up that I would, unknown to me, I'd find by doing researches for content that I'd put up. Even I don't even know where my content is sometimes. I'm looking for it. Find someone else is posting it. To all y'all that have been doing that, thank you very much. We've got to get the word out. Unless you're telling me, and if you can tell me, I hope you, if you can tell me, you tell me. Proton Mail, Mark at the Beast at ProtonMail.com. Tell me how I haven't been right. In fact, I was in my mind, I got lots of jokes in my mind. I was going to enter, if you want to, too, you can go to Real Liberty Media, go into the chat, enter a prediction before the end of the year here. we got another day or so. Uh, for what's going to happen in 2019, I wanted to enter in that I would not be pre I would not be broadcasting by the end of 2019. Is what a prediction I wanted to be. Why? Because I fully intend to continue. If I failed, then I'd be right. I wouldn't be here, but I'd be right. And if I did fail, then I could tell you after 10 years, I finally was wrong. Finally. So this is the observation I have. I haven't been wrong yet, folks. And what's wrong with us then? If I am not wrong, then where are we as a people? And when I'm right, you're not going to talk to me, be able to talk to me. I'm gone. And so we've got decisions at some point to make. I get... Uh, a little frustrated. Uh, the, the issues are not easy to solve, but they're solvable, and they're not easy to solve. Certainly, when we're doing when we're the crickets, when we're doing the the axiomatic, well, not an axiom, an idiom, idiomatic cr crickets. Okay, go ahead. Thank you for everybody who's been promoting the broadcast, all the content, 
notwithstanding what the p platforms do. All the folks over there, I keep forgetting, on BitChute, thank you for tuning in every night. You come in on the Sunday and you raise the levels up. You've really changed that that numeric there. I've really been happy to see people are interested at BitChute because it wasn't looking too good for a while. And I'd say thank you to Gary L because I noticed maybe even when he posts, more people come in. It's not a lot, folks. It's only a, it's only maybe 50, maybe 60, maybe 70. Over at Mines, it used to be hundreds. Now it's down to two, three, four. What's going on, folks? Do, do we as a society do not want to hear the answer? Well, I think that's part of the answer, but some of you do, so I keep talking. And I am listening to you, folks. I don't. I don't, want, I don't just wring my hands and say, okay, that I'm done with that. The few of you that are responding to tell me don't give up, and thank you, Australia, over at uh, the FN site. Yes, thank you very much. We, we put our grain of sand in the pile. Yes, very good. But we have to put that grain of sand in that pile. Hopefully it's not in the bucket of sand, uh, the Acme uh, behind the woodshed Acme bucket of sand that everyone's putting their head in at this point. And so, just wanted to thank everybody for what they've done to promote and get the word out. I hear people, are, their attitudes are changing, their words, their vocabulary is changing. I'm hearing it. I see it. I told you that I have to keep telling myself the answer, the victory is not going to be, the victory is not going to be obvious. It's just going to be a, ch a, a change that goes on. And I'm seeing the evidence of those changes. And so I'm not completely dissuaded from continuing. Thank you again for all the people that are promoting. I notice I don't get many shares or likes as far as on the platforms. I understand that's important if we're going to get the message out, and you can't do anything more than that. I'm asking you to really consider. In fact, right now, while you're, if you're listening to this part of the broadcast, why don't you reach into the platform and say, here, I want to know. I want to at least sub. I get what the subs. I want to uh, like. And if you dislike, I want you to put a comment why, exactly why. If, you, if you're not sitting there and you're just listening or you're enjoying this, you're not helping, I don't think, to tell other people. I guess people are, have a herd mentality. No matter how much you tell them, they may say they don't. But go to Real Liberty Media. I don't have a private uh, an independent website for that. You have to go through Real Liberty Media. I, I've always been of the idea if we can that we can make like networks that people come to that will su be supportive. That's partly why I don't split off, and I really don't like going to a bunch of new websites to go put my stuff in lots of places. It may be the reality, essentially, eventually, that we have to realize that because of the control of the main platforms. But if you all can't come to a spot, uh, you have a click to make, a mouse click, and you can't get to a real Liberty Media, I don't know about, about you all. And I don't talk about the ones that are there. I'm talking about all the ones that are out there that I aren't, gonna hear, aren't even going to hear what I'm saying. Why aren't they there? Why would they prefer other things, given the nature of the real harm that's against us today? And I guess here's the point. It's, I'm not saying that there's a harm, and I'm, saying, I'm not saying that there's a harm uh, that is not going to affect them all. I'm saying there's a harm that they're oblivious to, and they'll see the evidence of it. And I know that maybe not everybody, but I see enough people complaining about it that I know they see it. That's really what I'm responding to. Well, what's your complaint? Do you see it and your complaint? Now what are you going to do about it? It's not like I'm saying stuff that no one even responds to. No, no, you, you're complaining. I see it. I know exactly what's, what's going on. Well, I was just being irritated by, uh, by a previous, on UCY chat, she runs the, uh, Jules runs the uh, old, old broadcasts, uh, being irritated by the discussion of uh, the technocracy and the, and the uh, sustainable development and Maurice Strong and all that. I, I have no problem with people understanding it. But at some point, you start to argue with these insane people. They all, about these, the, the, the interviewer and the interviewee admit these people are insane. They're running an asylum that they've created. We're part of it. And we don't put those people back in the rubber room. So they, these people in the interview, will, are, will discuss and reason out how unreasonable the data is. The very thing that hasn't even been substantiated to be valid. Why am I arguing about the pistol that the guy carried into the bank instead of just arresting the, the bank robber? Why am I arguing over whether or not there was a certain caliber gun that there was used or a certain grain of bullet when I should just be arresting the crime? 
And, and I see that's the uh, that's the obvious problem. The unmiss inobvious problem is well, if I start arguing about that, and I just oh maybe a DEW he used a DEW in order to 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 rob that bank. No, I'm focused on that, and it has nothing to do with it. Maybe the pro we're now not even focused on the point. We're getting into our mythologies. We're getting into our s s uh, sensationalism. We're getting into the fact that we need to tell ourselves a story because we don't want to do take the responsibility, and we make every excuse to do everything but take responsibility. And, I mean, for me, I'm looking at the reality of the world and we're saying that it doesn't seem like anybody even understands what the reality is. Not that I, I even understand it. I look at there's a sun out in the sky. What's the sky? It's an empty, supposedly an empty space. It's not supposed to be any water. And that's what we were told. That's how, how big a lie that I would have been up against this whole time. And instead of looking at the sun, and we have a very real dynamic that could start hurting people here that has nothing to do with man, and we're not looking at that, and when that thing comes on us, given it will and can, uh, we're going to be totally out, outplayed. And totally unprotected. And this is the thing I see, not just in this grander thing we see as this changing climate, this m altering variation in, in the way the world and the sun and the solar system works. And been going on for millennia, we're told. This happens on the things that man makes. Not Michael Mann. No, the, the man and woman trying to make what they think is a better world. Even those insane people actually believe it. And we work, walk into with our fallen nature. We expect to hand everything over to somebody else. A global governance. Even your local government. I just explained to you coming in, the forest fire policy, the ultimate responsibility for fires in your county. Look how dysfunctional the county is then. Do they have a hand in the cause? To some extent, absolutely. Can you stop all natural things? No. So to that extent, they're not. It's going to take a whole other rational thought to come in and start applying the basis. Why well, I say go to the black and white. That's the only, in an insane place, uh, the only steady place is a, is a foundation that you, you know was there before you got there. With the caveat, within the last 40 years, all that foundation has been covered over by a bunch of rubble. And the way I could cut through that, as I've told you over and over, is I went to the land law, the law of the land. And that gets us into certain aspects of law and certain responsibilities that are unchangeable. That becomes the black and white. And then once we get that, see, we're not even there yet. Once we get that, then we might be able to start looking out for all these other problems that have been that we we brought we brought into. As I explained last week, I felt fairly comfortable uh, with what I produced for you all last week in explaining as as summary as I did it. All you have to do is go through all those areas and start looking at the consistency, start going and looking and researching the places I tell you that they come from, start looking into how they turn around and look at what's going on today and how all those policies are working in your life today where you live. They affect you today. And I can then, then now you go back and you point, oh, that's the cause for the harm. Now, why wouldn't you want to go attack that? And then you have to understand that you have to be really intelligent about it. There's a tactic and a strategy in this war. You just don't go beat up on something that's bigger than you and more funded and, and, and more uh, organized. No, you have to go in there and do, a, do the strategic guerrilla attack. No, we've got to go back to our fallen nature. The animal they treat us is we have to start mimicking, it seems. And anyway, it's right there. It's right there for us to understand. It's right there for us to do. And I hear very few people do. But we've come to the point where the reality is now being stated. And it came through a Zero, zero Hedge article uh, talking about the uh, Reddit CEO, Ellen Pao, Pao. Uh, I thought this was pretty fascinating, admitting, and this is Reddit. Remember, this is the Reddit. It was the forum that the Norman was programmed under and became a psychopath. And this is our world, and this is the CEO of that focus. All these people that think they know something, and they're going to address it, and they're going to be complaining about it, and they're going to find their forums together to talk about, none of which ever, nobody ever does anything from it. And they talked to the, the CEO, came up, CEO and made this statement. It's all true. 
everything is fake. And I just was fascinated a bit about that just for a short time and I moved on because that's true. Everything is fake. And everything is fake until you lay the foundation for what is n not fake. But the forum of the digital world, if a CEO of an of organization in the digital world tells you it's true, everything is fake. So we can keep getting into this world and keep embracing it and keep utilizing it in the wrong ways, or we can come back and say, wow, this is the trap they set up for us, as I've been trying to suggest to you. I say trying because I don't know if many people really believe it, and when they do, they don't do much about it. And I wrote in a Twitter, it says, a, a statement that which would make Orwell proud. We have arrived. If you, I don't know if you need any more knowledge. It's all fake. All this stuff you see given to you is fake until you can prove it's true. See, they've given us over into, they've taken your presumption of innocence away, and they've given them the, this fakeness of presumption of innocence, and that is what you buy into first. I'm really looking at some of these things and wondering, why isn't there more? Oh, they talk about how it's all fake news, fake news, this, that, and the other, and they give sarcastic responses to all this. Where, why don't we have the the outcry that it's all fake until you prove it's not, and start judging these people that present themselves otherwise, uh, like uh, media, let's say the MSM we talk about. I don't you know why there's an argument over this? We just, we're now in the world. We have arrived, folks. It's all true. Everything is fake. So why don't we just call it out right there? Why do we continue to engage a dialogue over it? And what I'm saying then is, what do you put that in practice? When you turn around and you see what these cogs do and you see all this evidence that's coming, you say, but that's all fake. You haven't proven it's true. And it's universally. It's true. Everything is fake. Why do you engage it then? Why do you get in an argument? Well, I try to tell you when you do an equity action, you don't walk in with all that noise. You walk in with what your rights are. You walk in with a provable right that cannot be you cannot be encroached. And so until people understand that part, we're not moving. We're not getting beyond, folks. We're not going to go to the place that we need to go. Then we're going to continue to be little whiners, whining about how bad it is and saying nothing can be done because we're not doing anything. And when we go to do something, almost like a self-inflicted wound again, we do it wrong just to say, see, I told you. I was just listening to a broadcast before, uh, two hours before this broadcast on UCY. Ron Stevens, appreciate what he does. Absolutely appreciate the information he's given. And I'm listening. I don't know when I heard it before, but it reminded me what he's saying. He's in an equity action, and they don't even know what an equity action is. They don't even know how to proceed through it. and They're being attacked by one. And I remember distinctly a couple of broadcasts addressing those things for them. And how to at least present the record that would show that who the government was coming against them in the wrong way. And that defeats it. But no, nobody listens. Does anybody listen? No, 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 no. They're talking about how they don't know. I'm just telling you, that's the fact. Nobody seems to know. And I don't understand why that is. I've been broadcasting for 10 years now. And I hear these statements. I hear, I see people talking about engaging with an insane creature. They think they can out-rationalize insanity. That's an insanity, folks. So everything is fake. And that it's all true that everything is fake. Or, well, what interested me on that, and people didn't see this, but it came through my Twitter feed, is I follow, for some reason, I just found myself following, I never remembered clicking on this, so it wouldn't be somebody that I would follow normally, because it drives me nuts to watch it, but I figure, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm following this, uh, this party now, or this uh, Twitter uh, uh, account now, and it happened to be something I don't like, but it gives me an insight. And so I keep following because it gives me an insight. Well, what this is was interesting to me came through right after the, right before the admission by the Reddit CEO that it's all true. Everything is fake. 
uh, this little thing came up from a retweet by somebody else who happens to be a geneticist. And uh, the individual also happened to work for the USDA in policymaking. And this, uh, and I'm, so let's go and tell you where I'm going to touch this to. Remember, I talked to you numbers of times about the models that are being used are actually not based in science, but are based in risk management. And I exposed to you how that's done through the method that I told you about that the COGS use, as well as the stakeholder condition that you know about and the states that go through and use these uh, consensus process methods uh, under alternative dispute resolution to destroy people. And that your agencies are using risk management. It's like one big insurance scam, actually. They use risk management instead of science. They call the risk management science, but they don't tell you that. Here was evidence of this fact, and also evidence of the fact that the people that are in university or in a cloistered group of people that think they're elite, that they don't think they have to answer to you, that they won't answer to you, and they may not even have the capacity to answer you, but proves exactly what I was saying. A society for risk analysis. In other words, this system has a society part, and this is so small. This is just one Twitter account making this statement. The Society for Risk Analysis. Listen very carefully, please. Perspective article in risk analysis argues that an effectively to effectively integrate policy-relevant goals, researchers need to understand the obstacles to transcending disciplinary borders. Big multisyllabic words. What's it all mean? Perspective article in risk analysis argues that effectively to effectively integrate policy-relevant goals, Researchers need to understand the obstacles to transcending disciplinary borders. This is a, a big deal right here in this statement. They say this was a perspective article, which I'll have a link for, regarding this integration of policy into research. And so we have a problem. Remember that integration, diversity and integration is a, is a thing. Goals policy-relevant goals is alternative dispute resolution. That's the outcome determined before you get there. And that they're directing researchers to understand the obstacles from putting policy within their research. Transcending the disciplinary borders. Remember, multiple disciplinary interjection is how they do this. This is how they started this whole mm, UN thing. Uh, the way they compartmentalize so-called experts, say, about scientists so-called, and uh, one one step would define the finding, would hand it to the second step. The second step took it as truth and moved that second second step on to the third step, but the first one wasn't ever really proved to be truth, and it wasn't. It was to the outcome. And by the time it got to the third, it was the one the po policy implementers, they were taking everything as truth without proof, and they came up with the policy considerations that would be interjected, integrated, into everything that would come out. And they called that, see, research goes to this basis of science. And they're saying in this risk analysis uh, society, you need to transcend your, discip your, your disciplinary borders to incorporate policy considerations that are based in goals into your research so that when it comes out, it's, it's agreeable. Well, that's nothing more than outcome-based Dispute resolution, outcome dispute resolution. My response to this, if I hope you're following this, and I hope I've explained it a bit clear with clarity here. They begin the article, the perspective article in risk analysis to to that to effectively integrate policy research goals. Researchers need to understand the obstacles of transcending disciplinary disciplinary borders. And I say the quote, the phrase to effectively integrate policy, and then the phrase incorporate policy perspectives isn't an argument. They claim it to be an argument. This paper that you'll read claims this is an argument. But what you're really reading is to effectively integrate policy, incorporate policy perspectives. That's a direction, not an argument. And I say that in the Twitter, back to the geneticist and back to the society. And I say that 
those two, those two phrases are not an argument, but an adulteration to research. Baked in solution isn't science, but politics. E.g., for example, USDA Forest Service National Wildfire Policy Abuse by Risk Management, not Watershed Science. And this is nothing short of criminal. And so what I want to point out to you, these cogs will use this research and best science, as they call it, this best science. And you, they're being told, we have, I have the first evidence, if I, if I didn't have to go look anywhere else, I hadn't, hadn't looked anywhere else to go find it. You see risk analysis, risk management, is being told to the academics and these people that are in the positions to make these, poly, these research, this best science, to incorporate the outcome goals within the research and call it science. Now, you tell me how incorporating an outcome into your scientific research and study can be anything but a political answer that you receive as the people, you receive as an answer, as an alternative, already baked in, the answer is already baked into the choice that you'll be given that you have no clue about how to challenge. Their statement from this risk assessment, risk analysis society, speaks to risk management. I talked to you already about this. This is not even new information. I talked to you about why I brought up to this uh, geneticist who is a, used to be a USDA policymaker. I said, you cannot bake in the policy in the research. That's political, not science. And this is what destroys your, your public land, public domain, the urban interface with fire. They bake in the goals of sustainable development, and by risk management, not watershed science, and then you get the outcome that you see. And no one understands any of this. And yet these academics agree with this and think that's, that's the bee's knees of how this thing works. And they do this. And when you hear it, you think it's science. When they didn't tell you, it's actually a baked-in policy into so-called research. In other words, they're fitting their research to make the documents that you're going to see as so-called best science. And I've already always said, what if that best science is fraud? Not only do we see it's fraud here, we also see that they are baking in risk management. What did I tell you about was going on with the new maps from the Forest Service? The new maps for the fire and risk management that they use are based in risk management models, and those maps are derived from those risk management models, not watershed science. Do you even have a concept of this before I started speaking of it? If you did, why haven't you been using it? If you didn't, that's how you're being duped. This is just one example in this national, even this policy, see, they even use the policy has been adulterated. And I analyzed the policy, and it gave me an insight, and I, we're now advancing. I don't know it's going to hopefully come out here in another couple of weeks. We've been waiting all this time. The bureaucratic goo of government takes so darn long to do the obvious, but we are patient, and we're watching it. We took this national fire policy. I extracted from it the law within the policy and then showed how this risk management was adulterating even the policy. What have I told you? Consensus processes, alternative dispute resolution, by their own warning and their own dialogue, says these are not constitutional, statutory, codified ordinances, or anything lawful. So I just looked to see where did the where did the where did it fall off the where did the wagon fall off the road? So right here, with all this, everything is everything is fake. It's all true, folks. Everything's fake. Folks, take that to the bank. Now, now you got the, now the work is on, isn't it? Because now you got to, in a way, you have to now disprove it all, uh, show that it's a disproof. But in fact, you don't if you understand how to approach it. You just de de declare it's false, it's a fraud, and make them. They're the ones presenting the evidence. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary element, ele ele elephants. That's right. Elephants in the room. Elements. Uh, the, the evidence. You have to do it. You have to uh, know what that, that, that standard's going to be. Next, the, actually, days before that, I get this uh, this Twitter th this Twitter comment that they're telling the researchers who are wired to accept this, make sure to get beyond the disciplinary boundaries because it has to be an interdisciplinary consensus. 
make sure to make that your policies, that our policies that we create for you are baked into your research. This is no different than the 1985 document where the guru was telling us those biologists, so in the evidence of the biologist, was a simply a bio, it's a political lobbying condition now because they take the policy and they do their research based on this policy. They told us back in 1985. I read it to you behind the woodshed just a, what, a year or two ago? Now, I kind of do this really slow. I don't know. Can't put it all out in two hours anyway. You know, I don't know who, how many people listen. I don't know how many are ready to listen. Like last week, it, there should have been a fire under people to go get things resolved about the cogs. And I know that didn't happen. And so I come here again. We'll talk about it some more. Everything's fake. The experts say it's fake. We know all this, folks. I'm telling you, this is the sourcings of this stuff that you can focus on instead of your opinion. And so when they come to you and they talk to you and they say, well, you're just a nut. You don't have a training. You don't have this. No, you go to their own documents and tell them, no, you're baking in the policy in your research. You don't have a science. And this is pretty much universal, so I don't even have to worry about saying, oh, look out for this and look out for that. Just look for this. You'll find it. How do I even know to tell you about it? Because I've identified it. The method that we sued in 2013, folks. Of all things that come through my Twitter feed, something I really don't even understand why I'm even following the, the, the researcher, the scientist so-called. But, but here it is. I see. I keep my eyes open, folks. And here's an answer. If you don't understand it quite yet, I hope you have a better appreciation for it. You need to kind of look at this. This is how they're taking you out. This is the best sciences. There's all the best economics. There's the best social sciences. There's all this stuff. They, the authorita they throw in is, is policy goal outcomes baked into the science in the proofs that they use to de destroy you. And I say that, I'm going to ask the question again. Did you know that? And if you don't know that, and you're even someone who, who involve, engages some of this stuff, how are you going? To, how did you even start to be, begin? How did you even begin to defeat that? Likely you did not. Now, what may have protected you, those of you that do this, was you follow my other rule: follow the law, go find the objective basis, and lead with that. That usually is jurisdictional, and that usually takes them out because they can't go there, so they won't. As I've told you again. The, it was the smart meter rollout. I said, just go look at your APA, the Administrative Procedures Act of your state. Likely you go down and you'll find out what was the required, and you'll find out due process-wise. They failed to look at obligations of the state or obligations of the United States. They looked at the obligations to the law, and they were going to go through dispute resolution. And then there, in that one passage, like I showed you, it was in the Oregon statute, I think, what was that, 184.520, if those of you want to go look it up, ORS 184, or 180, maybe it's 183.520. You'll see it says, provided that you do this law, then maybe then you go on to the alternative dispute resolution. And then you focus on the fact that they failed to do that, you kill this. If you Even if you didn't understand what I've been just tell, talking to you for 40 minutes. See, they bake into your reality what's fake. You accept it as real. They set up all the dominoes for you to go ahead and set up the next domino. Your consent, your silence, your failure to answer right. And they continue to go. But guess what? It's still a line of dominoes. It's still, you put your card on the house of cards. It's still a house of cards, even if you were involved. So you can say, wait a minute, I made a mistake. Here's what I need you to do. And what would that be? Well, that would be referring back to the due process they failed to do and looking at the looking at the law, looking at the objective basis, looking at the things that they're the state was obligated to. And I talk in that regard because what, do I, what am I referring to? The law of the land, the literal law, not the law of the land like the Constitution. The law of the land, the land. And the black and white evidence you come from, not opinion, not best science, nothing. But the, law, the titles, the paper titles that are registered, that the government has to look at. Otherwise, they become they come into those things like treason or extortion or coercion, like I point out to you. Otherwise, 
So anyway, I, I found this fascinating. I don't know if how many other people saw it. Uh, I guarantee I'm still waiting for a response from the scientists, the researcher, the policy, uh, the policy writer, this society, anybody who saw that through their feed. Nobody responded to me on this. They tried to, this uh, one uh, account responded to me a long time ago that I didn't know what I was talking about. And I responded to that account to say, and I'm not making an analysis because I don't want to call it out, no sense to do that. This is principles of, of the workings, not the people. I mean, I really don't have a problem with people necessarily. I just don't like that what, how they act and they harm people when they think that they're not harming people. And they deny it and they'll deny and they'll throw all these obstructions in front of you and you just ask the simple question, well, how do you, can, notwithstanding what you think you can prove, how come you're still harming people? Well, notwithstanding that you, this, this tweet, how can you justify making policy considerations where research, objective research is required? They don't answer. They do not answer. And I'm suggesting to you strongly to look there. And I've just explained why. You don't even know. This method that we sued in 2013 and got crickets, which is the good kind of crickets, in equity they defaulted. Default judgment is binding on the parties on this very point. How did it come through my feed? Except that it's in the world, folks. It's still working. See, that no one listens to me. No one listens to us. No one listens to the law. That's another thing. So everything can be fake, see? And that's true. And so, interest, I don't know. Maybe I went too far. Maybe, maybe you didn't understand. Maybe you did understand. Maybe you're not going to do nothing with it. I don't know. It's in the ether now, folks. It's true. Everything's faked. I'm telling you, I've been talking about how they fake it up on you. It's, MSM is the distraction, folks. But it's there, too. But what's more important? You want to work with MSM? It's in, it, it, irrelevant to your life relative to a policy consideration being made by your local government uh, to, and let's just put it back in the fire, to either make an ordinance to stop it or not, to be Paradise, California, or not. What's more important? All the method to distract you is all the same. Reddit, whether you get on the, the, uh, I don't know what, it's not even alternative media. It's just a medium of, of distraction at Reddit. Everybody gets into their little interest, and that's where you all stay. And yet, right there, everybody that's in the Reddit, the CEO says that it's true, everything's fake. Everything. Oh, it may be real enough to you, but ultimately it's fake. And I'm going to tell you the biggest fakeness is you do not move against the substantial things you need to be actually responding to. That's why, to me, it's all fake. So right here in one tweet, we have how that the academic, extorata, experts say, scientists, the scientism, is given the knowledge through the channel, whatever the communication channel, on how to bake in your destruction and implement the policy that you think looks like whatever authority they say they need, whether it be best science or best accounting practices or best this or best that. I told you the best is not. It's like smart's not intelligent. Be careful here. Anyway, fascinating to me. I don't know if anybody else saw this. The... I would call them the enemy without any any judgment on their on them themselves. I think a lot of people are damaged goods anymore. I think that they only know what they know, that they're in their own little bubbles. They think those bubbles are the way to go. You get in the bubbles, the, what they call the echo chamber, you get into those bubbles, those cavitation areas, and you're going to believe what's ever the inside of the boundary layer that makes that cavitation space. Well, cavitation has to do with lack of pressure. There's nothing to do with pressure not a balloon blowing up it's actually the evacuation of the space to the point that there's no molecules can't hold together and so it creates a space the boundary layer on that's very powerful you probably aren't going to hear from around me that's what's going on in this society right now and so we have the twitter uh, risk analysis is risk management i told you that this is how it's done on the heels of the cogs and the fact of what they talk about this was in time uh, for this week and this is the ref referent, the more authority outside of me, folks, I guess is the point. The more authoritative view of that is happening. Your outcome-based goals, visions, 
and the things we talked about last week and, all, and I talked about are baked into the research before you even understand it. And then, before if you don't appreciate this, the research is clouded in its own jargon. You, you're likely not going to parse through that really very well and very easily. Uh, so I say, why even discuss it? Why even argue with it? Just show that's what they're doing. Just show that they're using, like I pointed out, as an example. I try to I try to be education. I try to educate people. Even to, even these experts say, even these educated PhDs and all this. I reference something that I have to deal with, which is an abuse of the policy that does have that science baked into it, and also has it baked into the policy implementation. And if you don't appreciate that, there's many places that this risk management gets baked in. It ends up being in the product that they do. The maps are risk management assessment models, d d dig uh, the graphics of them, not watershed science effects in the land, the real land. If I can use real and land to mean the same, if you know that legally, that's not a, that was an incongruity. At any rate, let's get past that. That's next level, next level understanding. But no one even operates there, so I don't worry too much about it. So, everything's fake, and they're choking that down your throat, and we all look at the products of all that, don't realize that policy's already baked in, so you're not inside your law anyway. And these people tell you that whatever they do is not lawful. Nothing, none of it. None of it's lawful. And I'll tell you what, I've been looking for a decade now, or maybe 15 years now. Really, it isn't. There's nothing they do that's lawful. I haven't found any bit of it. And as soon as you bring up the law, it kind of extinguishes their fire. Did, I mean, do I talk too fast on this stuff, folks? I mean, really? Are you really, You're interested, but you're listening. I hope you're interested. But is it clicking through on the mechanism on how this thing works and on you would take this on and take this up to address something? No, you don't understand what I'm talking about. We're talking if you never had fire policies, if you never read the fire policy, if you didn't know about the uh, aid, uh, alternative dispute resolution consensus process, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. But have I put it together enough to show you there's something there that's identifiable even through a tweet that I can show you destroys some facet of your life or will be used to destroy some facet of your life? And so... This brought up another thing in the in the ta in the notice that we get through the stream of, of I guess it's a stream of consciousness even though it's all fake because it's not based in the real basics of the responsibilities is why I call it fake. An article I mean and I didn't talk about this last week but it kind of came up in this thread of things are fake we get to focus on the the internals uh, we look at the internals of something and those have been baked in to be fake we don't recognize that. And I say, you know, we've got to take a few steps back. This is not a joke. This is not just something, oh, it's some euphemism. You really have to start looking at, track down how things came together, what the sources of authority these people that do this use is a different type of research than just saying the DEWs caused the fires in California. I mean, come on. People are going to die over that, that problem. I mean, I just my, I stopped thinking, but I just start to say that, and I realize, wow, people in this society are being destroyed, and they're doing it to themselves, and I don't even know what to say to that. I can't even speak to these people. I, they'll not listen. As I say, I have not received a negative response into me that, that I've been wrong. I'm talking about the substantial wrong. You know, I do a misspeak here and there. That's That just seems to be nature but substantively wrong on what I suggest to you is going on, what we've done. Nobody has responded to me that I'm wrong. I have to assume at this point my rightness is better than the fa everything's, uh, that it's true that everything is fake. Why? Because the entirety, and I, I don't like this term, and I, I, I had to do some research because it didn't really, I don't, I'm not hip this way. The term was gaslight. Uh, is the and I think if I understand it correctly, it's where you're, you're it's you're what you know it to be the truth is denied to you by someone who kind of wants to sell you out of what you know is the truth, and they get you to persuade you to believe in an untruth. That's what this whole thing does. Whether even though I don't like the term, you're living in in the gaslight society. 
that it takes some really strong-willed people that start using their mind again correctly. And their spirit is guided by their spirit, and this, 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 their soul just will not let this up to re, to adjust this. And they say mind, body, and spirit. If you're not 100% there with those three elements at least, likely not going to happen for you. Likely that there's a break in that three-strand uh, cord we're told is so strong and it's un unbreakable. If I sound a little bit more biblical in reference, go go read those those principles there, folks. So I tell you about going out in three men or three women groups to defend against it, to fight something down, beat something down, and and, and expose it, arrest it. Doing it by yourself is tough. A little bit easier with the second, you know. Bunch is easier with the third. But you have to be able to see correctly. You have to be able to cut through. Uh, some of the nonsense, and be careful that you're not analyzing an insanity that's really, you allow when you do an analysis and you make an argument. Remember I said that that statement was not an argument, it was a statement of, of implementation. Those uh, researchers that want to be consistent with what we need uh, in this, uh, in, the, in the direction we're going, will put policy considerations into their research, was actually the statement there. It's not an argument, it's a direction. And you have to learn to identify those and learn to cut through them. And we move on now to the topic I was going to talk of, not talk about uh, last week, and I didn't, uh, was uh, about this uh, Second Amendment. And somehow you look at these dialogues and you start saying, well, like I told you before, they're right, but is that what you want to do? Do you want to argue with these points? Do you want to come up with what you think is a better argument and hand it before someone who's not going to hear the argument because they've got their policy baked into their decision already? In this particular case, I'm talking about a bar association member who is part of an NGO, who's determined the bar association is an NGO before the UN, who in its pol in its plaza has a knot tied on the barrel of a pistol, probably likely not too conducive to the law uh, regarding the uh, Second Amendment right to bear arms, or is going to be looking as they tell us under sustainable development, we, we will we will impose and promote this agenda where appropriate. In other words, where they get away with it. Uh, that uh, an article came up, a new gun bill in, in Congress, I think it was here, uh, that analyzes un eight unconstitutional ways it's in violation. And I, and I read this because I want to see what people are thinking. And I, again, this is, you could, like I've told you a few researchers I admire, 100% right, but as applied or not applied, they're 100% irrelevant is the way I looked at this article here. And they go through and discuss the eight unconstitutional ways this bill going through through uh, Congress, it's H.R. 715, uh, is, quote, to prohibit the sale, acquisition, distribution in commerce or import into the United States of certain firearm receiver cast, cast, castings or blanks, assault weapon parts kits, machine gun parts kits, in the marketing or advertising of such castings or blanks and kits on any medium of electronic communication uh, to require homemade firearms to have serial numbers and for other purposes. And this is a 3D, I guess, a, a manufacturing bill as well. And the article goes through in analyzing how, in their opinion, this is unconstitutional. And I've told you, be careful walking into one of these uh, forums that will decide what your rights are. We heard that they do that, and we heard how they take, in the past, a couple of, a few broadcasts ago, I talked to you about the scrutiny tests, and they've got it down to where they'll, a judge, a judge, they call themselves, will use the rational basis scrutiny test to put it less than an administrative right, what is a fundamental right, and then they never put the right argument. As I've been telling you, stop with this hunter stuff. Stop with self-defense, unless your self-defense had to do against the government, the purpose for which the second really had its power, the, to control, the alter, or abolish the government itself. Notwithstanding what Lincoln proved, to the contrary, but let's, let's, let's go on this fantasy for a little bit, because I'm not on the point of the argument. I'm on the point of when do we sit back and we start stop arguing with these people, try, start making our opinion of how it is violated, and then hand that opinion to someone to actually determine who is perceived to be the authority, when by, by fact, if you don't have the facts set up to be 
as if it were, as we saw the last, as I used as an example, the use as I picked up from someone who offered it in their writing, walking into, you have to control some uh, someone walking into a theater and utilizing a gun just for the sake of shooting the gun. That's not permitted here. And see, that, that, that then argues whether or not that action was provided for. And that clearly wasn't because what they don't, aren't saying is if you just brought the argument that the Second Amendment was to prohibit or alter or abolish a government who becomes oppressive and tyrannic, whether or not the, the, the Supreme, that same court's going to recognize the preamble or the organic document before the Declaration of Independence. You do not hand that to them, and they do not have a right to decide that question, or that as a question, what, the purpose of the gun. You wouldn't even be talking about walking into a theater, would you? And so this this goes through, I think, some valid discussion, but I think they're opinions because they're they're not they're opinions because you're, this this thing this law that's not yet law that is now going to walk into a democratic house. Don't don't underestimate the problem with this. All this is is now discussed in this article as opinions that are going to be handed to so a third party that is an NGO that, that that already agrees that they'll put sustainable development on you global governance where appropriate. The arguments of which I think we've kind of we're now to the point as what I've been saying stop trying to argue with these people, and my observation on this and you got you can get the link to go read it. Again, it's not even about the right to bear arms. This has to do with a method of destruction, and how they come along and they take the stuff away. How your governments do what they do that you all claim to complain about, but and you but you don't respond in a way that creates the knowledge for people that may not be able to see how the trick was done. And eventually people enough see the trick, and then I think it starts, this thing starts to stop. Because every time we do this, we show the trick, it stops wherever we apply it. HR 715, 7-1-1-5, uh, is very unconstitutional, 80% lower uh, ban. Uh, okay, for 3D printing. Now, let's get back. Do we, my thought was here, do we allow an argument? Well, how, okay, so then the question is, well, how do we stop an argument? How do we not make this an argument? And remember, I brought up the idea when you have a fundamental right, in particular land law, law of the land now in the land, you bring the ultimate evidence, which is what, folks? If you all understand and listen to me, you'll, the word should pop out. You want to do trivia? This is the tri trivia answer. This is one of the answers that should be in the trivia, actually. What's the ultimate evidence to land? Okay, we've got a delay. I can't get the answer. Maybe one of you will put it in there. Maybe a bunch of you will. They'll make me smile. The ultimate evidence is what you bring to support your property right. What's the ultimate evidence? It kills every other piece of evidence. Every other piece of evidence is inferior, isn't it? At that point, is there an argument? No. That's the very thing I'm telling you to do here. So let's go back to whether or not someone may construct this as an element. that's not arguable, is what was the purpose of that Second Amendment? That this bill wants to keep you from making three, it's the 3D Firearm Pro Prohibitions Act, and I'm not going to dis discuss any, at this point the, the failed definition of what a firearm is at the federal level, and remember it's always tied to commerce. And then I told you about the bad wheat decision in 38, that they said if it affects commerce we can make a decision. That pretty well bound everybody up and no one understands how to affect, fight that one which is not a fight, you bring the equity action that says you transcended your authority and interfered with my right to what? Well, let's go to the Second Amendment. What was that? Well, if it's the right to be keep and bear, the right to keep and bear, to do what? Go to the fact of it. The fact of it, it wasn't hunting and self-defense, even though that's a part of this defense. It is a self-defense against government. We can use those, but that's not really the ultimate answer against the government itself. The answer to the government itself is it was to stop you. And you, in equity, cannot decide your own case. And you have no authority anyway because this is a fundamental right that I get to keep and bear. And along with that, and here's where I want to move this conversation, and I hope someone does, don't argue and try to argue all the, the balancing act stuff. As I told you before, they'll bring this in the rational basis and kill you with it. You bring it to the fact that in equity case, this is a fundamental right by the Constitution, shall not infringe the right to keep and bear. Along with that, the appurtenant right of keeping and bearing is acquiring. 
And that cannot be, has, there's no state interest there at all for my, how I acquire, and in particular not in commerce. In other words, these 3D machines, if you would trust them, I don't even know why people would do this, although I have seen one, uh, one um, arm created that uh, didn't use completely plastic. They were smart to put on the, the most difficult things, the barrel or the trigger, the, the firing pin, and all that stuff. That was all made of metal. So you're just dealing with a holder now for this mechanism. But even so, you have the right to acquire, don't you? And there's no other limitation on how either. This is kind of like correlates itself to the highways. In the Act of 1866, Section 8, it says the is hereby granted, the, the construction of highways is hereby granted. The construction of highways is hereby granted, period. No other condition. It's an open-ended grant. There's no restriction on mode. There's no restriction on what, on how, in fact, built into that is highways are really have this almost indefinite size uh, condition. It's all based on its utility under the grant for lawful use. That's partly how the state can come in, and when a road gets widened, they really have a big power to go ahead and widen that highway. In particular, let's just put it in this context, that every property along adjacent to that highway came after that highway. The one that came before would actually have an argument, but I'm not going to get such a small amount of people that would know that. And why would you anyway at some level? I don't know. Everyone has their property rights, so I'm not going to decide that. This is no different than that. This, this fundamental right uh, is, is the grant equal to the grant, an unrestrained grant to do something, uh, build a highway, the mode of which was never defined. And the, and the limitation on that ends up being damage, I, I think, is how, what I've found. There's nothing you can use the road, any mode, as long as it doesn't damage. And you'll look very carefully on how the Motor Vehicle Code says we're in a total different law now in the Motor Vehicle Code, not your road grant, but the Motor Vehicle Code says that commerce can't damage that road. And I think that's part of the confirmation I used years and years ago to show that you can use that road, any mode, as long as it doesn't damage the road. Why? Because there's strict liability at all this too. You're not you're not in that that uh, that uh, not that um, uh, what's it called? It didn't come to me. Uh, the uh, it's the liability of a corporate limited liability. Excuse me. So 3D firearms pro prohibition. Do we argue over what better are balancing between the state right or the state's right and our, our right, or do we just say, listen, the right to keep the better arms uh, uh, also is the pertinent right to acquire. And it's not defined any mode. Allow uh, disallows the government to encroach here. See, if I do that, then I don't have to balance by any argument the eight unconstitutional opinions, which might be valid, but then will not be recognized because it's appropriate. We can do this rational basis test to destroy all those rights because of the system we have. What if you just take it away from them? Said so you don't have a right to to produce this. This is an infringement on our right to acquire. And that's not up for debate. That's not an argument. And you do that where? You do that in an equity action. Now, the problem that they've set up, just to let, let you go ahead of that, is that they'll probably tell you, and this was what we had to face in our lawsuit in 2013, was that it, it they can do all this threatening, supposedly, which I don't agree with, because they have a implied duty to stop a transgression of a other branch within the branches which shows you how far away we are from everything working smoothly yet. Uh, there, They will not allow you to really sue on this yet. Now, I would do two. I would test. I would test whether or not they had the right. I would test the failure and dereliction for not stopping this before it got going on the same theory that I would then wait until it got became law. And they do that because they say, well, until it's a law, you don't have a right. You don't have standing. And uh, my view is that you don't have a right to threaten me. And there's case law for that, too. You would have to bring that. But see, you're bringing that jurisdictional question before the court to accept or deny, and they're likely not going to, when they look at it as a, vo a formidable threat to what they're doing, they're not going to allow it. So you have to take another step back and try it again. That's what we had to do in our lawsuit in 2013. See, uh, But we also had the advantage of knowledge as well, doing some research. You, in this case, for the law that the laws that we were in, going to enjoin in the state that we were in, as soon as the legislature agrees, both houses agree, they become law for the purposes of effect. And so we could sue before the governor signed. And that's essentially what 
what I would argue here that they don't have the right to interfere with a congression with a constitutional prohibition uh, against this. But the it's not an argument. But what I'm offering today is we don't go through all the unconstitutional. Of course, it's all unconstitutional. Why? Because we haven't found the very first point of of harm against the fundamental right, which I believe would be better stated. And it may not be it to the exclusion of others, but we work at it from the fundamental law of the land, law of the land principles. We have a pertinent rights relative to this that are just as powerful. They're unstated, but they are a pertinent to the fundamental right, which is still blocked. And when you say I have the right to acquire a pertinent, the right to keep and bear, and for the purpose of the go against the government itself, there is no argument that the government can produce that says it has a higher right. And this isn't then in the idea of the First Amendment, you can't yell fire in a theater, you can't walk into a second, uh, you can't use a gun in a theater without a cause. That's not, even in, that's not even part of the discussion, is it? They want it to be part of the discussion, but you don't bring it that way. And more importantly, you don't think of it that way. So I'm trying to bring a more a, a different type of perspective that we bring. If we expect rights to be assertable, we have to stop making them arguments, stop making them opinions. And I notice, and let me go back to that administrative or that uh, risk association uh, tweet. I said when I read it, the first part is the second part. The first part is what they want you to do. The second part is that the researcher will do it. That's not an argument. So they didn't even put an argument in their own statement that they said that there was an argument in the study. If that didn't spin your head just a little bit here, if you're half listening, you didn't understand what I just said. Get back to, to now again, utilizing the same principles underneath that they do in the method of destruction. They bake into the pre presentation your defeat. You have to jump before that. You have to find the first thing. I don't know yet if that's the only one I'm bringing to you, but I know what I haven't heard. In fact, it's been admitted. Lots of people that are in land rights, let's say like Wayne Hayes Jr., admire him to the highest. He's, he's, he's got himself standing naked before the judiciary that was never so opposed to let him get there in protecting his water rights and his, his estate rights and his father's rights over the land of the water rights in, in Nevada. They, the court has rendered him naked before the law, and they just found out that they, that they had no right to do that. He didn't know about this appurtenant right. And that was a misstated term. I've already explained this. By a court, the claims court, in, in, uh, in back in, in Washington, D.C., that they said that was a component right. That's incorrect in law, but that's what they call it administratively. That tells you that this not Article III court, claims court is not actually doing Article Three claims. They're doing administrative claims. But Wayne Hage did not know this term of pertinent is what I'm asking you all to start understanding comes with rights that are either granted or prohibited against the government. If you don't understand this dynamic, all these baked-in policies go right by you, invisible. What's the word? Transparent to you. Well, they do what? Transform your life into what? The future the oppressor wants, the future we want. Where do we hear that? In the A2030 document, which is what? Promoting the next, until 2030, the, the promoting how they're going to implement the goal of sustainable development. The Bar Association itself says it's a concept. It's a neutral concept. We don't even know if this thing works. It's just an idea. Just an idea. So while you all are getting all frustrated and watching this stuff and making arguments and coming up with your opinions, I think we need to step back and say, wait a minute, we've been arguing all these arguments and we need to be asserting the rights and let's go find out what the concrete foundation, what the hard rock foundation is that we will stand on and not, not, uh, not relinquish. And I think the right to keep and bear with the pertinent right to acquire and this is just applying uh, this is the same right you get in uh, in mining law. The right to keep in, the right to the grant also allow re, allows you uh, the right to acquire other properties. It certainly says in in the because of the purpose you can condemn land for the purpose of water. 
if you didn't think I'm talking about some powerful stuff. You have the, the power of government in this mining law. I want you to really think about what I just said there. Again, people half listening to me or turning it away or listening for a part. You're not you're not getting anything. I'm I'm thinking my mind's like like exploding a bit. Do people realize the power they really have if they understood how to approach it? But getting into the point here, so here's a problem. They're coming after your guns, folks. They're coming up to the Second Amendment. They're doing it bit by bit, the incremental approach. And all y'all that are MAGA, you think Trump's helping you out. And I don't have a neither here nor there. I found out you can use a string, a cable, to do the same thing as uh, this bump stock if they don't, if they outlaw them. But here it is, Trump administration, 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 if you didn't understand where we are, moves to ban bump stocks. Because he can't see any use of them. But says it's not up to him. I have the right to keep and bear and acquire, and I have the right to keep and bear to do something, and that was to alter and abolish the government as I saw fit with the people, not unilaterally, as we thought we needed to, and I have, again, we'll add another pertinent right. I have the pertinent right because there was no mode decided to be, get whatever arm I needed to stop that government. And I hear 90% of you laughing. But that's okay. This is our problem. Are you going to ask for everything you're entitled to? You're, you're going to step back. I don't know that I would choose a bump stock myself. But that doesn't mean that someone else hasn't figured out a weapon system style that they want to use in order to function for the purpose of the Second Amendment when it comes down. And I'm not advocating for that. I say Lincoln pretty well told us that point, and we are the U.S. military is so far beyond that now, it's just horrendous. But if you think that there's not an incremental approach even by Trump because he couldn't understand the utility, in some regard I can't either, but it doesn't mean that I have the right to stop you or that it's still not your right to acquire. If you want to use a bump stock and run out of your ammunition really fast and maybe only not hit your target and then die, well, that's up to you. That won't help us as the people trying to defend ourselves against the government that's gone nuts, but that's okay. I can't, that's, that's us. That's what we are. That's our nature. So Trump is uh, moving to ban stocks. To me, it's irrelevant, but see, it's an encroachment. They're taking an administrative approach to this to take away something I think that is built into the Second Amendment, uh, keep and bear. It's not keep and bear subject to government uh, regulation. It doesn't say that. Like the highway law doesn't say you, you have the right to construct highways by uh, government regulation. It doesn't say that. In fact, court cases say there was no restraint on the construction of highways. Well, the restraint is for the construction of highways that they're used for lawful purposes, for the purpose of, they use the word transportation there, but hauling, it's hauling the raw materials of the world, of, of the earth uh, from to where they are to where people need them. Other uh, lawful purposes as well. So what, another po position here, uh, the, the bump stocks are being banned they're encroaching upon uh, the right to make your guns out of 3D materials, and pretty soon it'll be. My thought is, it's uh, the sintering, the metal sintering will be uh, uh, will be affordable, and that's when they'll be real. I mean, that's when you'll be able to really make up a a, a weapon system that uh, you'll just design your weapon system. And so, and as I as I intimated to you before, I went to the Society for Creative Anachronism for many many years. I was a, a an armorer. I made armor. Uh, like an apprentice for seven years. You know, at the end of seven years, I could make suits of armor and all this other stuff. In fact, I just did the munitions grade. I did thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces to let other people get in a it's medieval safety uh, equipment to beat on each other and pretend that you're killing each other. Well, if some of it's pretend. Some of it's really you're learning some stuff. And everyone chooses a weapon style. Well, you can't fight if you don't. And I, I was found out that my preferences were a little bit unique. And I was not near as as functional and successful when I was forced, if you will. Someone said, here, try this. Here, try a sword and a shield. That didn't work for me at all. Every time I went out with a sword and a shield, I got beat down bad. So that wasn't, being dictated to do something as a weapon style wasn't the answer for me. And yet, when I the one I chose wasn't truly understood by a lot of people either. 
but I was very effective in it for myself. And so to me I see a little bit of the same problem. I had the right to bear arms to defend myself in war or against a power. I want to be able to choose the weapon style my experience tells me. I want to choose the weapon style I'm proficient at. Otherwise what? As playful as it might be, I'm dead. And so I am I don't necessarily like this from this point. And why, again, what I'm saying about the right to acquire and the right to decide what to acquire for you is really more the point to me than arguing how they violate the first, the fourth, the second, the seventh, whatever. Because when you do that, the government comes in and puts their sovereign authority underneath what? The war power to defeat you. And what I'm saying is that they can't use that war power to defeat anything. In fact, you start pointing out that their war, the very decision is contrary to the existence of the pro, prohibition against the government in its on its face. When I say that, you may hopefully got a flash, oh, then I don't have to argue the rest. There you go. That's your equity equity rights asserted in, in law where there is no real law, because the law is really made up. It's legalism. And what did I say before? How you present that is a black and white. Uh, in the ultimate evidence of land, it's the patent. For this Second Amendment right, it's a simple printing of the Second Amendment, and you start to now defend that from encroachment by those that would say, but we have a right to interject, we have a right to say, we have this, we have that. Not in an equity case, you don't. And anybody who doesn't have the right, who encroaches, who's an official, becomes a party in opposition to your cause. Think about that one. So I'm kind of maybe talking beyond from people for people here, but when you get in the rules, you start looking around, you start seeing there's a mechanism, there's a remedy there. Now, whether or not the oppressor is out there, the occupier is there to kind of um, muck things up, well, I think the more people see that that's the fact, we're going to be able to get to the real point. But it won't be over allowing them to continually answer arguments that really are not supposed to be before them. And what have I just then said, if I said that, what popped in my mind? That's the quo warranto, isn't it? What's your warrant to even decide the case? What's your warrant to invent an argument that I didn't present? What's your warrant to avoid, evade the law that I'm showing is being violated by the very organization that has no right to interfere? Thou shalt not infringe is pretty big. Okay, it doesn't say thou. It's like in the patent says that these, this is a standing uh, law of the land, ultimate evidence forever. That's pretty powerful stuff. Why don't we hear it being used? Instead, no, we'd like to be all, all, all um, academic or technical and all whatever, all seeing about how how much we understand, how much we can tell people we understand the constitutional rights, and they don't, you don't realize that you weren't sharp enough to figure out, well, you're going to hand that someone to make a decision. You don't even know the remedy to run that in through. And if you did, you probably wouldn't make those opinions because they're unnecessary. Why? Why? Because we can go a different route and we can then bring into a fundamental right the appurtenances that are not spoken of that are just as powerful or more powerful because they're silent but need a voice and you hand that voice, you give it voice, you give it writing, you put it down and then you say, but, and that is untouchable as well. I th it's not an argument, so I think that's a much better path for those of you that are, you know, thinking about this. I, I don't know. But another way to do this Get suffer the encroachment. Uh, over one million gun owners refuse to obey a ban. No one turning in magazines in uh, apparently is written out of New Jersey. Unless you've been under a rock lately, let me let me address this. I've noticed a lot of people saying unless you've lived under a rock lately, not Iraq, a rock. That's the same problem that is uh, Netanyahu said. A uh, little joke. Unless you live under a rock, Let's, I don't know if I'm liking this. Um, I'm not sure what what the real what my real objection to, but we keep diminishing. There's people that just won't see this. Uh, they're not living under a rock. Well, they might be a cricket, and they might be living under a rock, but it's not because they're living under a rock because they've chosen to be there. And I think this is, misses the point a bit. But I've seen this statement come up recently a lot. Under unless you live under a rock. In other words, it's so obvious. Why isn't anybody asked? Well, I'm talking to you. To I'm talking to a public that is not receptive to doing a dang thing anyway. So I, I don't know why we even preface the statement. But anyway, moving on. You 
You've likely seen the unprecedented push by all levels of government to separate law-abiding citizens from their guns. No, this is not uh, some conspiracy theory. The president himself ushered in a new level of gun control, doing this with, with what his liberal predecessor even refused to do by banning bump stocks. Now, you know, remember he did that right before, he wouldn't do that right before the election, so that was all political again. Uh, however, the, as states across the country seek to limit the uh, ability of innocent people to defend themselves, people are disobeying. So this is about uh, uh, Governor May, Governor Phil Murphy signed a law that reduced the maximum capacity of ammunition magazines from 15 rounds to 10 rounds. Citizens immediately sued the government citing the unconstitutional nature of the ban, but they failed. Now, now they did exactly what I said that they ought not do. And then they handed it as a question against the government's ability to say, this is in the public interest. And they didn't leave themselves ground to say, but the people's interest is what we're interested in, not the government's interest. And that's just one little twist and tweak on this right, to, to, uh, right here. New Jersey's law reasonably fits the state's interest in public safety. See how they did that right there. Next paragraph. And does not unconstitutionally burden the Second Amendment right to self-defense in the home close quote, the court wrote in their decision. Did you catch that, folks? You see how they do this. New Jersey's law reasonably fits, this is with court speaking, reasonably fits the state's interest in public safety and does not unconstitutionally burden the Second Amendment right to self-defense in the home. You hear how they killed it right there. In other words, you're, you're right, it's in the home for self-defense is subject to state public interest. My question it bring comes up again. What if you were to assert the purpose for the Second Amendment was to control government? How about if it was determined, looked at in that context? And what authority did you have to decide that, given it's a shall not infringe statement? Did you get how they did this here? The people with the rights lost because they put it underneath a narrow view that this right is only used for self-defense in the home. I'll bet, if you read the documentation on that, they never, ever asserted a sole interest was to stop the government, as intended by the Second Amendment, as it was framed, and the org organic documents intended. I'll bet some lawyer wrote that. And the court's another lawyer, and they did it just like they're going to do to take away and make it look like you don't have any rights. So what do people have to do now? They now just stop following the law, and now they become subject without any remedy, because they lost, you see. They don't look that they only lost for defense in the home. Is that the only right you have under the second, just defense in the home? And don't go to hunting, please, because you'll lose again. Because you keep using these lesser, uh, abil these lesser pertinent right, uh, pertinent uses uh, against the government, giving it its ability to assign. This is exactly what I was just telling you a few minutes ago. They get to assign and assess the public interest, the government interest, not the not the pre the, the the antecedent prohibition. And so, for the state, how do we get at that? We have to have to go through the Fourteenth Amendment to say it's the federal standard is on the state. And so we see the oxymoron right there again for all you states' rights people. Anyway, it doesn't matter until I get people seeing some of this stuff a little better. I'm going to see all this nonsense going around, and we'll be arguing. We'll try to tell people all that we understand about constitutional rights, and we'll hand it to an attorney who's going to, in a judge's costume, who's going to tell you how that ain't the fact. The court went on on this case. The law also does not violate the Fifth Amendment taking clause because it does not require gun owners to surrender their magazines, but instead allows them to retain modified magazines or register firearms, firearms and registration that have magazines that cannot be modified. So registration is confiscation. Registration in the context of my pertinent right to fight the government gives the government knowledge, intelligence about what I have. That's foreboding. No one brings this up as a consequence of the right, of what the real purpose for the Second Amendment is as something that the government has no authority, even through its judicial branch, to undermine, by whatever reason. But you hear, I wanted to point out on this thing right there, they brought it into a lesser standard in order to deny it. And then they went on and they told you, don't bring the Fifth Amendment clause. 
Do you think a Fifth Amendment uh, argument is going to work against the 3D law? No, because you haven't made the gun yet. It's the taking of an existing thing. Well, what, what if you argued that, did not even argue, what if you asserted that the takings was the fact that you m took my right to acquire? You don't have that right, so it's not even an argument. And what, uh, what's the underlying little ghost in the, in the, uh, the elephant in the room there? They want to believe that it interferes with commerce. That the uh, provision of the uh, amendment, Second Amendment relative to stopping the government for its tyranny and abuses and is antecedent the Constitutional Commerce Authority. The, did, did the lawyers read all, write all this? I'm going to go out a, way out on a limb, and I'm going to tell you they didn't. And I'm going to tell you that they used the defense of the self-defense in the home, uh, and uh, the court picked up on it and just and slapped these people around. And so now millions of people are now subject to this court case and to try and defend themselves against this tyranny. And I find it amazing that a million people won't step up and say, how about you uh, rethink what you just done there? There's a million of us. And if you don't let us have the method and the uh, uh, quiet, the uh, pertinent right to maintain whatever magazine we have to protect ourselves against you, we're going to come and have to alter and abolish you. So you think a million of you doing that, and that's the warning shot, if you will? You don't go do it. You give them a record that you have the right. You assert that right right up front. Here's your choice. You find out that you are derelict in your duty to protect against an infringement that I have no limitation on fighting against you. You're in no position to infringe. You have no warrant in law to make a decision. This is not a shooting a gun in a theater. And you don't have a right to diminish anything about the arm I keep and bear. We never get to have to worry that it's a taking because you never had the right. You never have the right to install a public interest against this purpose that says it's for you to control you, Mr. Government, Mrs. Government. Zit government? What? Can't even do gender anymore. Huh? It's the, the government zit. No gender. And so on, I can go on and on. They they talk about the you look at. I would say you take this case, you take the discussion in this, even this article. I'd go look for others. Take every reason that the court said, and put it down, and make sure you never make that argument. You never make it so that you you support yourself with that when you go to protect your right, fundamental antecedent right against the government, to not infringe your Second Amendment right to keep and bear. And I assert and you would put this in the paper, the appurtenant right to acquire without limit and without restriction or restraint. And I say that. Did you find a restraint inside that Second Amendment? But see, our problem is, is we allow the attorneys to atone our rights. We think we are knowing about our constitutional rights, and we don't even know the first clue about how to defend them in the first instance. In other words, don't make them a question that an occupier, in this case, a private NGO sits in the seat of decision in the so-called judiciary to decide. Again, I, I look at this uh, these tablets thinking, I see the same answer almost over and over. It's this alternative dispute. You brought your issue. You, you gave it your best shot. And what you said by the uh, administrative judge, the attorney, wasn't good enough. Because the government's all powerful, you see. So if it was all powerful, and there's evidence of that because of the existence of the second, and in fact, the Bill of Rights is a bunch of prohibitions because the government was all powerful, would destroy you in every one of those things if it had a chance. People in government, not the government, people in government, psychopaths would go in and take you down. So that we have the evidence that it's all powerful, but it's the people inside that will just abuse other people. But that is not a, not to be determined by them once they get in. That's why it's before them. I don't know if I ever hear anybody discussing this in 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 the in their action. I don't mean a lawsuit, uh, like you would think a lawsuit to sue. To uh, I'm talking an injunction, properly presented, and that is such a subtlety. And so here we have these questions that are brought up, and yet at some time, at some point, something pops up, and you hear what the truth is. But it takes. This is the problem with. It takes forever, and this is like the other failure of the judicial. They'll they'll use the excuse it takes a long time to get justice. Folks, that's not justice. 
A delay to justice is not justice. That's an equity principle that you can bring immediately. But do, here's the case that came up weeks ago. New York ban on nunchucks ruled unconstitutional by a federal court. That title is, is just a mouthful. A federal court denounced state's authority, folks. For all you states' rights people. If you don't think it's the way I'm saying. But it took years. This 1974 New York State ban on nunchucks that was put into place for over years, fears, over fears that youth inspired by martial arts movies would create widespread mayhem in the unconstitutional, is unconstitutional under the Second Amendment, a federal court has ruled. You have to go through and read this story a, a little bit to see, but what in that, what narrow capacity was it? They already brought up the fact that the the, the lunatics, the, the fear, the fear-driven people who saw too many movies, were actually making law. It takes it takes since 1974 to have a federal court say this was unjust. This is supposed to be one of your fundamental, immediately protectable rights, folks. But when you find out what it went through, it had to do it through a criminal case in order to get out. I realize the society doesn't understand how to defend themselves in their fundamental rights. That should have been an equity action immediately, like this other bill, seven what seven one one five coming in. If you can't do it before to shut it down and get them to stop misappropriating misappropriating public funds before they get it in pass to threaten you, then you get after the after it right after they pass it and you shut it down for I would hope the reasons I'm telling you and maybe others. But it took all this time. Because someone went through a criminal side issue in order to get that bill struck down. Do you want these bump stocks to be found out 20 years from now and you're going to be suffering 10 years of jail because you're, 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 uh, you're utilizing one won't give it up uh, out of your cold dead fingers? Uh, about the, about New, Jersey, New Jersey, you have a magazine with 30 extra rounds? I mean, we've also proven on top of it, which is really not an argument for it, you can have connected clips that you can change as fast as a total 30 round clip anyway so this is nonsense but that's not you're not looking at trying to justify the insanity you're trying to say right up front no no you had no fundamental right to encroach because this is a this infringement is a prohibition that you weren't supposed to encroach because this law is to protect us against you mr and mrs government official when all this failed and we identified the failure in the courts, and that's the other thing you do, you show that because the Bar Association members in a robe are an NGO that does support the the, Fed, the United Nations uh, prohibition uh, and wanting the intention to kill your, your right to bear arms, they don't have a right to review it either on top of that. So th someone went through and defended themselves to be able to use these nunchucks. And you can read the story. Uh, it's found all these years later that that law was unconstitutional. Something that should have never become law, which shows you another failure that shouldn't even come. The judiciary should be challenging. The judicial branch should be challenging every law that came up, comes out on its own, underneath its inherent power to make sure the constitutional Republican form representative government is lawful. You ever heard that before, folks? The acknowledged inherent power of each branch is to check the excess of another branch. Do you ever hear that happening? Not after since 1974. It's supposed to happen immediately. Is that new? You've ever heard of that? If, that's, if you've heard about it and you haven't brought it forward, why not? If you haven't heard about it, how absent are we on what we are looking at when we look at what we call the government? How much excess and dereliction of duty are we allowing to that? But uh, I don't have any much sympathy for us when we complain so much. It's one thing to be engaged like at your utmost in, in finding the obstacles. It's quite another just to sit back in your chair, chat and complain about all this stuff without having a clue. All these years, this nunchuck law in New York was unconstitutional. Why didn't it get immediate treatment is another question. It shouldn't be a question. You should have an answer, and it should be resolved now. But we'll see that we won't get our rights. And so here we are. 
Justice delayed is not justice, folks. And people have gone to prison and whatever that did to their life all this time. And this is just one law that finally made it through. Because somebody just wouldn't say no. I'm going to fight this until the very bitter end. And they did and they prevailed. Like Wayne Hage even though he didn't know about the appurtenant rights, which now he realizes, had he known and asserted it, it may have truncated this whole thing and eliminated the government's ability to do what they've done to his family. On the heels of that question about the unconstitutionality, as I tell you, it's unconstitutional. It's the right to defend yourself. No, it's the right to do all kinds of stuff. I don't. They didn't actually decide it on the right to go against the government because that's not asserted. Like, what's a nunchuck? When you got hand-to-hand combat with a government soldier, that becomes important then, doesn't it? Talking a little bit harsh here, but that's is the realities. I don't want to see it. I'd rather that we do other things. And I'm saying don't, because Lincoln's told us the truth of that. And we got a million people with extra magazines that aren't walking to the government saying, look it. We told you we ain't gone to. You had no right. You're infringing that right. How about if you just reconsider and reject that and get us back to the law? Otherwise, we're going to change you out, all million of us. See, we, we've lost our real responsibility. You give them the notice up front that they better change, and you have the force behind it to cause the change. And you don't do it because you're a riotous group that's nonsense. You say, listen, here's the fundamental right. You get, Again, you build your record before you act. You don't wait till now you're going to become a felon, folks, just for having a few extra bullets in a gun. Because some, uh, I don't even know what to call them, these are criminals in office, and you weren't aware enough to go arrest that in them, enough to get your government functioning again the way it's supposed to check it, so it doesn't come out to you. There's some really fascinating checks and balances that are just not functioning. We would rather argue about our knowledge about the what's been violated in this law against the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms, instead of just saying, wait a minute, let's go fix the thing that brought it out that we have to talk about it. Why? Because I've told you there's another condition as well. And you have to kind of look at this as it goes, and it came, it comes out. It comes out in interesting ways. Whether people will accept it or not, I don't know. I, I just take it, into, take it in stride, because here's the proofs. Perils of police action. A cautionary tale from United States or U.S. data sets. Has to, it happens to be a study that was done by the U.K., uh, I think a U.K., over United States police action. In the United States, your interactions with the police and the statistics regarding all of this. And for me, we can read all the numbers. I guess we could go through. We could figure out who's being violated more than others and do all that thing. I just want to focus on the title because I think people miss this every time. And the people in Britain understand these are not, un, these are not stupid people. They understand language. This is a study. The data study on, on the occurrence of police action and how it, what it does, its damage to the people. It kills and maims and harms. But let's look at this, perils of police action. you think they just took that term, police action, and just use it because it sounded cool? I don't think they're that stupid. I think they use it with intent. If you look at any study that's done scientifically, they want to make sure their jargon is absolutely right, because it's supposed to be a peer review, and they don't want to be caught for simple, stupid uh, responses that way. Do you know what a police action is, folks? you think it's the police? No, this goes international. This is the things that I first thought when I saw that, this is the perils of police action was, oh, this is the United States government to go to Vietnam and not call a war. This is like every other so-called police action. The United States government has been involved internationally. Why are they using police action here when it should have been police activity? Or police something else? No, this is particular to the condition. Police action. I just tweeted out this suspension as soon as I saw this. Police action, quote, is a euphemism for a military action undertaken without a formal declaration of war. And then I cite in the Twitter, perils of police action, the cautionary tale of the United States data sets. And in it, it says, quote, those injured during United States legal police intervention as recorded in 2012. And then I add the hashtag, convinced yet? Folks, those of you listening to me, what am I asking you? Are you convinced yet about? It's the military occupation in your life that the UK study 
presents when they use the term police action. And that you will be harmed by these soldiers. And you will be killed by these soldiers. And it goes on to say other things. I'd rather have you read those for yourself. So it's you get that in the black, that black and white in your eyes. To me, this is another uh, stream flowing by proof. It's just water that goes down. It's a knowledge that, that goes by uh, by the wayside. That you look past, you say police action. You're thinking the police doing what they do. I'm telling you internationally, they use police action because the U.S. police is a federal police. It happens to be the little policeman that's night, right down in your town of whatever jurisdiction. And where, what have I not said when you, you know, some of you listening are really kind of sharp. You, you do pick up stuff. I kind of, I like to see that you have an interjection. Those of you that kind of pay attention to this, does some research to prove what I've been telling you about this, police action and your thoughts. What's missing when we say underneath this definition, it's a, undertaken without a formal declaration of war? What, what if, what if there was no, war that ended what if you named it some other thing and so the formal declaration was never given and they never ended it might that fit here too as well I, I found this definition a little bit confining because I again remember we, we read there's no proclamation ending the period of the civil unrest the term is called civil war. But when you start reading the documents, you start seeing they tried to dance around everything but that. They called it all kinds of other things, didn't they? And so there's another, we can go another path if we wanted. I, again, I said there's so many pathways you could take to prove out what I've been saying. It just depends on whether you're interested. And at some point, then you have, to, I get to the point, okay, I've, I did it by accident. I go down one trail of thought and one logic set, one, well, if this is the way it has to be, then what I'm looking for this and I'm looking for this. These things have to be lined up and then I'd find certain things and it ended up being the pathway, all the different paths, not all of them, but a lot of different pathways to the same problem. Why I come to you and tell you you live in an occupied territory. Why I come to you and to tell you that, you know, you talk about U.S. legal, U.S. police. There is no U.S. police, not from our perspective, but there is a U.S. police. And that U.S. police has no scruples about maiming you or killing you. And so, here's another study. I found it fascinating. I don't see anybody talking about this kind of stuff. I don't see anybody highlighting it. When it comes across my path, I try to uh, pass that out, whether or not people appreciate it. I, I don't know. I know some do. I don't know if they understand it the way I, the depth. I can't only do so much on some of these forums. I say a little bit more here, but not a, not a, not more actually relative to the time I I am talking. I can only talk in nutshell type nuts hell uh, type of uh, conceptings here to try and hope uh, hope that you are inspired to go verify uh, and validate, and then okay, and if that's validated, which I assume I I assume you'll do the right study and it'll be validated, then you have to say okay, well there's a proof. I saw it. I read it in my black and white my eyes. What am I going to do? What what am I going to do with that? How is that inter? How is that enter into my decisions on that? I do something about it, uh, and if I go to there, then that I, when I do something, how am I going to respond differently? Doing that for myself has I've thought it had has had me approach these problems totally different, and because I've been able, I believe, done it successfully and still doing it, and I don't know what else I'll find. We have a different uh, a different result. And and I'm hoping more people take on at least the thought. And and actually what I'm hoping is you take on the thought, you apply it, you find the nuances of what I'm saying, you start applying those, and then the brilliance of us working through this, everybody has their own talent. They see, you know, I only see what I see. Someone else might see something else that's just dynamite. And we move, we back ourselves away from trying to engage this thing, and we use, we it's, it's like an off there's a hands-off control eventually. In other words, we're back to that peace that we were supposed to be living. So another thing that popped up and the way we don't look at certain things here correctly and we get lulled into believing 
But we talk to ourselves like police action, well, that's the police activity. It's not. Uh, in my view, that was a de definition, and it's not a pretty one. And it's a denial that a lot of people are in, and so they get to make up, because they don't look at that, they think they can make up a lot of other things. And it won't, it won't address the problem. Uh, as this next report came through just near the end of this week, I think it was, or when I ran across it, uh, maybe through Vinny, uh, the, the Twitter account. It was, um, investigation uncovers failures at all levels of government in California wildfires. Is this condition that, that I talk about? The problem with this report is it doesn't really get down. It has us, it writes about some group that started looking at the problems about the wildfire, and they're from New York. And so I found this dynamic kind of interesting. What I also found is the failure of what they didn't find that I know about. So it's not an opinion. I know they focused on the surface failures, but they didn't come to the conclusion, and they leave it a question. Because they even open up the fact that uh, that there's a the, the government, the people, the government of California wonders what the cause of these fires fires is. And I can a, a big contributor is the government itself. A big contributor is. And when you see the California, relative to Jerry Brown, enforces a policy of climate change, that's exactly how they're destroying Oregon. That's exactly how they're destroying Washington. They bring in the policy goals. Remember, as I brought into the broadcast, you, poli you bake the risk management into the state policy, which then gets implemented into the locales, your local counties, and your forests will burn because they implement a fraud on top of policy that they don't tell you, that they say is best science, which has policy baked into it, which is the destruction. That this article talks that they, people from New York doing the study, ProPublica, an investigative outlet, found is at every level of government. And so this is a truism in a way. It's the truth, like I could say that, but it's a truism because, as I said earlier, the fire policy, the national fire policy, it's not the responsibility of all levels of government in the ultimate responsibility. Do you remember what I said? It was right in the policy when you read it. Pause, let you think about it. What did I say the actual ultimate responsibility is who to? Is it all all the levels? No, it's the local government. It says it the state or local government. The local government is what takes it when you start looking at how this works. The state government uses this ADR policy consensus to through using imposition of climate climate change and things in order to adulterate that. So Jerry Brown is a terrorist. He knows his office is usually utilizing baked in goals that sustain that push sustainable de development on the state of California. That's why it's at all levels. This article doesn't tell you. It tells you it's there, and you look at the all governments vulnerable. All, I mean, all governments at ca at at, um, at, um, the, at cause here because they didn't do something. I'm telling you that's the plan. And had the author, not to condemn the author here more than to say, we have a lot more study to do that we wouldn't be coming from New York and saying it's all levels of government. We'd be able to identify how each level of government is contributing and the mechanism. And I say that not as an opinion. In my mind, when I'm telling you, I've got, my mind, I told you, I have a couple things running all the time. It's giving you the list. i got a list running. It. It's just a bullet point of all the things that were failed at every level of government that caused this. It isn't just every level of government because each one had a part, but the ultimate responsibility was local. Therefore, that these are stopped local if you get involved to tell the local people this idea. You want the fires to stop, you got to get engaged there. Don't let someone say it's all government, because now you're going to go look at all the governments in a vault now, and you're not going to identify and focus in on how to solve it. And it's written right in the black and white of the policy now. Not This is not law. This is the implementation of public lands management that you can then extrapolate out, well, if that's good stuff and it's national, the umbrella that we have, but we can apply it to other places. But what's the authority? It's local. Now, that said, you've got to be cautious and very careful to acknowledge you can't dictate to the federal government either. This is a different study. and I, won't, I can't go on more on this. This is just something you'll watch. You can still control locally. The ultimate responsibility falls on the locals. You can still control the Fed, but you don't control the Fed. Now, that's a puzzle. 
And until you get involved, I'm not going to say more. Until you get involved, what I tell you won't make, you know, oh, that makes kind of sense, but you won't see how it works. And then those that are listening, that are listening for the tidbits, they'll say, oh, that's the weakness we have. We'll fix that. We'll hide that like we do our baked-in risk management. We'll bake it in somewhere else. So this article goes to show that uh, from a, a back east, they're saying all levels of government in California. That's too wide and too broad spectrum. I'm suggesting to you all, and this is in every state that you're going to have this problem, your local county governments uh, and, and other, other organizations can, I don't mean the NGOs and the, and the, and the, uh, the, the stakeholders. I'm talking about the governmental organizations um, like the state fire marshal and all that. Those are regulatory. Uh, they have a big part to... Um, to be part of how you resolve this problem. The problem appears to be at all levels of government because your corruption through the ADR process and consensus uh, is, it's, it's, it's metastasized through the government. But the documents will tell you where the ultimate authority is, like the highways, it's the county, right? Not the state. What the state does is subverts the county and the county officials don't know that. Now, I do the research, I have my colleagues, we do the research, we do the investigation to figure out how that works out, and we uh, we will tell any uh, any council, uh, commissioner, the, the council, the city council seem to be gone, I mean, I don't even know if anybody listens, any, but the commissioners of the county is a different type of an authority somehow. Some will listen, and that's where you start. And, uh, again, it uncovers failures at all levels of government, that's too wide. It, the government is failed, folks. And it's failed for a reason. And it's failed by a method and a process. And it's got baked in risk management on how this works supporting sustainable development, which the Bar Association supports. They support the failure. They support the destruction. And the only way this will be stopped is for you to have enough knowledge and you interfere by you look go right pay shoot right past all that so-called authority and you assert the black and white that i've been suggesting to you is there and then you can also deal with the power of the county and its police power and when we we presented this in one county all the other uh, voices all the other partners all the other stakeholders were silent silent why? Because we reasserted what law was supposed to do, how it was supposed to function. We restored the re relationship given, given again, we're still waiting for it to pass. We'll restore the proper relationship between the feds and the state. And as soon as people see that, a writing like this won't say that the level, the failure was at all levels. It was at the, they'll be able to say it's at the county, but we can fix it. I'm not here to condemn. I'm here to show you where, where do you put your effort? You talk to the governor who's who's baked into the problem, who agrees in the article that they're following to support the climate change. Oh, it must be climate change. Yeah, that's the baked-in policy risk management they're doing to destroy you. Or do you go to your county and you say, look, it, here's, how we, here's how we do this. Here's the forest policy that can't be disputed. Here's how they're violating that policy, and this is what you need to do in order to stop this part of that problem because there's going to be others. Do, can we step up and do that much and get see I don't have to care about whether or not climate change is a fraud I've got a method of destruction of the law itself that I can point people to and you could too hope something I said was uh, instructive get you excited maybe go look or really get some proof for yourself get a foundation a grimmer thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com allowing this broadcast now I think it's going on like five years now here at reallibertymedia.com thank you very much thank you for everybody who likes shares and whatever y'all do and all the rebroadcasts and the reproductions around the content I appreciate that and uh, Jules, thank you for keeping the broadcast running over at ucy.tv. And uh, again, I'll be here next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
Well, that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, I just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 